Pal. PARP1 inhibitor for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're delving into nicotinamide, a poly, adpyribose, polymerase 1, PARP1 inhibitor for treating Alzheimer's disease authored by Salek et al. This research investigates the potential of nicotinamide as a complementary treatment for Alzheimer's disease, AD. Let's break down the key findings and implications of this study. First up, let's talk about cell death in Alzheimer's disease. AD is characterized by the presence of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles, but it's also marked by extensive neuronal cell death. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly causes these neurons to die? Well, scientists have debated this for years. Traditionally, cell death has been classified into two types, apoptosis, which is a programmed form of cell death, and necrosis, which is uncontrolled and messy. However, recent research has introduced new players in the game, like necroptosis and parthenatos. Parthenatos is particularly fascinating. It's a type of programmed necrosis that kicks in when there's severe cell injury, often due to oxidative stress. This process involves an enzyme called PRP1, which, when activated, uses up a lot of cellular energy, leading to cell death. So, in Alzheimer's, we see a progressive loss of neurons, which actually begins years before any symptoms appear. This early atrophy is a key piece of the puzzle in understanding AD. Next, let's shift our focus to mitochondria, the powerhouse of our cells. In Alzheimer's disease, there's growing evidence that mitochondrial dysfunction plays a central role in the disease's progression. Mitochondria are responsible for producing energy, but in AD, their function is compromised. This dysfunction leads to reduced ATP production, increased reactive oxygen species, and disrupted calcium signaling. All of these changes can trigger neuronal death. Interestingly, studies show that amyloid beta, a hallmark of AD, can directly damage mitochondria. This damage disrupts the mitochondrial membrane potential and increases oxidative stress, creating a vicious cycle that exacerbates the disease. Some researchers even propose a mitochondrial cascade theory, suggesting that impaired mitochondrial function might actually lead to the accumulation of amyloid beta. So, it's not just a side effect, it could be a driving force behind Alzheimer's. Now, let's talk about inflammation. The role of inflammation in Alzheimer's has been a hot topic for debate. Is it a cause, a contributor, or just a secondary effect of the disease? Historically, activated microglia, the brain's immune cells, were thought to be a response to the later stages of AD. But now, we understand that these immune responses are crucial in the disease's early stages as well. Research indicates that chronic inflammation can lead to neurodegeneration. For instance, certain genetic variations in microglial genes are linked to an increased risk of developing AD. It's like the immune system is on high alert, but over time, it becomes exhausted and less effective. Interestingly, some studies suggest that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, might help reduce the risk of AD when taken early. However, later trials have produced mixed results, indicating that timing and duration of treatment are critical. Now let's talk about PRP1 and its role in cell death, mitochondrial function, and inflammation. So, grab a comfy seat and let's get started. First off, what is PARP1? Well, PARP1 stands for poly, adpyribose, polymerase 1. It's an enzyme that plays a crucial role in our cells, particularly in repairing DNA. Think of it as a handyman that rushes to fix broken parts of our cellular machinery. When DNA gets damaged, say, from oxidative stress, PARP1 springs into action, using a molecule called NAD to help mend those breaks. But here's where it gets interesting. When PRP1 is activated excessively, it can lead to a process called parthenatos, a type of cell death that's different from the more familiar apoptosis. While apoptosis is a controlled, programmed form of cell death, parthenatos is more like a chaotic meltdown. It happens when there's severe damage, and PRP1 goes into overdrive, consuming too much NAD plus and ATP, the energy currency of our cells. Now, let's connect the dots to Alzheimer's disease, or AD. Research has shown that in the brains of Alzheimer's patients, there's increased PRP1 activity. This hyperactivation is linked to neurodegeneration, meaning that it contributes to the death of neurons, which are the building blocks of our brain. In fact, studies in mice have indicated that blocking PRP1 can prevent cognitive decline and protect against synaptic damage. But wait, 
There's more. PRP1 doesn't just affect cell death, it also plays a significant role in mitochondrial function. Mitochondria are often referred to as the powerhouses of the cell, generating the energy we need to function. When PRP1 is overactive, it can disrupt mitochondrial function, leading to increased production of reactive oxygen species, or ROS. These ROS can cause further damage, creating a vicious cycle that exacerbates neurodegeneration. And let's not forget inflammation. PRP1 is also involved in the inflammatory response in the brain. It helps regulate the expression of pro-inflammatory factors, which can lead to microglial activation. Microglia are the immune cells of the brain, and while they play a protective role, chronic activation can contribute to neuroinflammation, a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. So, to sum it all up, PARP1 is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's essential for DNA repair, but on the other, its overactivation can lead to cell death, mitochondrial dysfunction, and inflammation all of which are critical players in the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Now, you might be wondering, what can we do about this? Well, researchers are exploring potential treatments that target PRP1, including nicotinamide, a form of vitamin B3. Nicotinamide can inhibit PRP1 and help maintain NAD plus levels, potentially offering protective effects against neurodegeneration. As we continue to unravel the complexities of Alzheimer's disease, understanding the role of PRP1 could pave the way for new therapeutic strategies. Alzheimer's disease, or AD, is a complex condition characterized by the progressive degeneration of brain cells, leading to memory loss and cognitive decline. One of the key factors in this disease is oxidative stress, which damages cells and contributes to neurodegeneration. In this article, the authors propose that nicotinamide, a form of vitamin B3, could be a game-changer in treating early stages of Alzheimer's. Now, what exactly is nicotinamide? Well, it's a precursor to NAD+, which stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. NAD+, is crucial for energy metabolism and DNA repair in our cells. The authors highlight that increasing NAD plus levels can help protect neurons from oxidative damage and improve mitochondrial function, essentially the powerhouses of our cells. The discussion in the article emphasizes that Alzheimer's is not just a brain disorder, it might actually be a systemic issue affecting other parts of the body. This means that treatments targeting the brain alone might not be enough. The authors suggest that nicotinamide could help mitigate damage not only in the brain but also in peripheral systems, potentially slowing down the disease's progression. They also mention that different types of cell death occur in Alzheimer's, including a unique form called parthenatos, which is a programmed cell death that can happen when there's severe cellular stress. Nicotinamide acts as an inhibitor for PRP1, an enzyme that, when overactivated, can lead to this type of cell death. By inhibiting PRP1, nicotinamide may help protect neurons and reduce inflammation, which is often seen in Alzheimer's. So, what's the takeaway from this article? The authors propose that nicotinamide could serve as a simple yet effective adjunctive treatment for Alzheimer's, especially in its early stages. With ongoing clinical trials exploring its effects, there's hope that this vitamin could play a significant role in improving brain health and cognitive function. In summary, this research opens up new pathways for understanding and treating Alzheimer's disease. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more content on health and science. Let's continue to learn and grow together. See you next time. Pharma